Hello, my name is Kerryoth, and today we are going to take a look at some of the new Space Marine units. Now, this is from a couple of days ago. I was going to do this yesterday, but I, I had I had a time, and it was not good, and I would have just been miserable and terrible. So I, I thought I'd leave it until I was feeling more upbeat and more capable of talking about it without sounding like a miserable bastard. So, here we are. I'm also going to cover the Ultramarine stuff today as well, but we'll do that in a separate video. Otherwise, this will go on for literally an hour, because as you know, I ramble like hell. And no one is gonna, no one's gonna want to watch an hour of that. So we'll split it in half. So first up is the incursors. Now my first criticism, my first criticism is sort of the name. I actually quite like incursor as a word. It doesn't really mean anything. Well, it's I mean it, it's obviously rooted in incursion, which is fine. But we are getting a lot of like OR names for the primary stuff at this point. We've got. I mean, we've got intercessors, we've got inceptors, we've got suppressors, we've got eliminators, we've got infiltrators, we've got incursors. It's getting a little bit over the top, but I do like the model. That is something. It looks a lot more, I'll say it looks a lot more sci-fi. That even looks a bit more sci-fi than the infiltrators, and I thought those were pretty damn modern looking, especially for Space Marines and 40k. These guys seem to be like a little step above even that because they've got all these lenses and, and freaky stuff going on, which I quite like, but I would absolutely and totally understand why someone wouldn't because at this point, they are quite the departure from what we're used to, let's be honest. I mean, if it wasn't for the backpack and the bolt carbine, I don't know, I would it look that 40k? I'm not sure that it would. Slight issue with the Reavers as well, in a way, but for some reason the Reavers had a... I don't know, they didn't look quite as modern as this. So, what do they actually get? Well, essentially, they just get to ignore cover, <laughs> is, is, is what it comes down to. So, they have the Oculus Bolt Carbines that rob the enemy of cover, and they also have multi-spectrum arrays that prevent them from suffering any negative modifiers when using ranged weapons, which to me seems pretty big, pretty cool. If you want a unit that can drive an enemy unit from cover with punishingly accurate volleys of rapid fire range from the outset of the battle, you'll want yourself an incursor squad, or several. I mean, that sounds good to me, to be honest. The fact that it's going to ignore chameleon cloaks is... Yeah, that's, that's a thing. They also have paired combat blades, so that's obviously melee. Use, strength is user, damage 1, but when resolving an attack roll with this weapon, an unmodified hit roll of 6 scores 1 additional hit. I do like that. I do like the extra edge that they get there from that. I'd still really like to see a proper dedicated melee unit, though. That's what I'd really like. That's nice. It's a step in the right direction. But as someone who has, you know, 20-odd Terminators and likes just charging them in face first, I would quite like that option as well. That would be nice. But we're getting there, slowly, by the look of things. So they also have smoke grenades, but they're also equipped with a haywire mine. Now, I have to admit, I really like the model for the haywire mine. It's a little bit... I don't know whether it's just me. It feels a little bit orky, but that's probably not. That's probably not fair. So, uh, it's it just... I just see it. I see it, and I think of the uh, opening cinematic from Dawn of War, where the Dreadnought is absolutely annihilating orcs, just mowing them down, beating the shit out of them. And then one of the uh, the tank busters like runs up behind him, slaps a mine on the side, and it blows up. I've watched that intro so many times at this point; it's ridiculous. It very much reminds me of that, and that is probably the only reason that I like it. <laughs> to be honest, it just makes me think of that, and it's like, yes, solid. So, once primed, the first enemy units move within three inches of the haywire mine, risks suffering D three mortal wounds or D three plus one of its vehicle. Cool. Before the mine is then removed. Yeah, by fielding a number of small units, you can lay enough haywire mines to make it near suicidal to approach. I mean, yeah, that's that's one of the largest and uh, most... That's what mines are for, so sure. I do like the helmet on this guy. I actually quite like the half, the half head, the way the visor's lifted up. I do quite like that. The sight on the bolt carbine, I'm, I'm still not sure about. I like the principle of it. I like the idea of it. But that, there's something very Star Trek about that, and I don't know what it is, whether it's just me or whether there is something a bit Star Trek about it, but it feels like there is. Something that shouldn't irritate me as much as it does, on this model in particular, and I'll get the cursor, which you should be able to see, paired combat blades, nice. The fact they're both on the same side 
is a little annoying to me. Now, I'm hoping that's just because that's where that's been stuck, but the implication to me when it, when you say paired combat blades is that you have one in each hand. Now, if you've got both on one side, does that not make it... I don't know, I'm not a knife combat specialist, but does that not make it a little bit more awkward to draw both at the same time, to have them on the same hip, both blades? Because if you've got to right, reach out, grab one, then grab the other one, do you go both at the same time, except the handles are one after the other, so you're like, you're like doing a weird twisty movement? I don't know. It, it's just a small thing, but I would much prefer to see one of those on the other side of the model. That just feels like it would work better to me. Tiny, tiny nitpick, I know, but, I mean, you, what else do you expect from this channel? The Impulsor, there's another one. I, 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 should have, I should have pointed out as well, Repulsor and Impulsor as well, so the, the OR names are still going. Still, by far, one of the ugliest vehicles I've ever seen. Still don't like it, don't like the look of it at all. It kind of reminds me of, I don't know what it is, I think it's the side vents. There's a bit of, like, this is what trains will look like in the future about it. But from, like, cartoons and films that were made in, like, the 50s. I don't know what it is. I, it's such a weird comparison to make, I know, but... I I just I just don't like it. Just don't like it. I'm trying, but I can't. I just can't. So, the Impulsor is a fantastic all-round support, ve support vehicle. They said before that it was a, finally the dedicated transport that we've been after. I say we. You guys. I have nothing but dreadnoughts. Don't give a shit about transport. But dedicated transport is one of the things that I hear the most from people who are playing legitimate Primaris armies. Where the hell are the transports? Where's the Rhino equivalent? Where's the... I mean, I guess this is the Razorback equi... I mean, unless the... Well, no, I already know that the carry capacity is... Six. So it's not really... I guess it's like the hover version of a Razorback if you want to draw that specific example although that's not strictly accurate because it's got more guns than a Razorback has. It seems weird to say that it was it's a dedicated transport and then have it only have a capacity for six models. The Repulsor has got ten, but the complaint I hear the most about the Repulsor is that it's got too many guns to be an effective transport because it's too expensive, and it's a bit of a threat because it's covered in damn guns. So it's like it doesn't really fulfil the role of either. It's, it's just... It's the same issue that Land Raiders have had forever, isn't it? It's the fact that, yeah, you can put units in it, but also it's got massive cannons on it, and so it's it's expensive. This doesn't... How does that... How does this fix it? Unless it's dead cheap. Unless you're talking, like, what? I don't know, 100... Like, 120 points or less, maybe? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what a... I mean, a Rhino and a Razorback are both cheap as hell. But it needs to be cheap to be worth taking, because otherwise it's just... Another repulsor with less capacity. I don't understand the reasoning. So, it's an assault vehicle, so it, it allows you to move, well, in your movement phase, if you do not advance, the units embarked to walk and disembark. Fine. Units that do so cannot be chosen to charge that that turn. Well, not, I was going to say that that's not great, but then primaries don't have any dedicated close combat dudes anyway that aren't going to be infiltrating to start with, so that's really not that much of a big deal. I don't know, the, the 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 carry capacity just seems weird to me. It just seems weird. I, I really would have thought it would be higher, but there you go. To better protect its valuable cargo, an Impulsor can be equipped with a Shield Dome for 4 plus and vulnerable save. Okay, well, that's going to add cost on, isn't it? But this is more than just a transport vehicle. Instead of a Shield Dome, you can take an Iron Hail Sky Tarn Array for some solid anti-air firepower, or a Bellicast... Bellicartus Missile Array for a choice of three missile warheads. Alternatively, you can give it an orbital comms array. So it's not, it is really not a dedicated transport at all, is it? It's its like a multi-function vehicle. It's like, it's closer to, uh, what is it? IFV? It's its not like, it's not, a, it's not just not a Rhino, is it? It's not a dedicated transport with Primaris. Because once again, you can just pile shit on it. Which is going to up the cost again. I don't... Mm. You're going to have to let me know what you think, guys. Because, as I say, the, the armies that I run, I do not require this stuff. Like, I, I know I'm a massive outlier with running a stupid mech army. But, this doesn't feel to me what people have been asking for. In the amount of time that we've had Primaris, and all the comments on all the videos that I've done about Primaris, one of the most... 
like complained about things is the lack of a dedicated transport, the lack of a Rhino equivalent for Primaris, the fact that there is no cheap way to get your guys around the field. Now, this could be cheap. It could be dirt cheap, at which point, okay, great. Carry capacity is low, but you can have a good number of them and they're not going to, you know, massively fill out your points limit. But it's got so many options. A 4 plus invulnerable, like anti air, it's got a missile launcher, or you can give it an orbital comms array so that you can do, do an orbital bombardment. That's, that's loads and loads of options, but it's still not, like, just. The transport that I keep seeing people ask for. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in the comments as to whether this is actually going to be any good or not. As I say, the points cost could be insanely low, at which point grand, but it just doesn't feel like what people have been asking for so far. So the orbital comms array, anyway. In your shooting phase, one model from your army with an orbital comms array that has not been used, this battle can use it to call in an orbital barrage. If it does select one point in the battlefield and roll 1d6 for each unit within d6 inches of that point, subtracting one from the result, if the unit being rolled for is a character, on a 4+, plus, the unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. Okay, alright. Okay. I mean, I could probably... yeah, no, alright. <sighs> the Invicta! There's another OR! Jesus! There's so many the end in OR that I just keep forgetting what all the names are. It's the Invicta, the Impulsor, the Repulsor, Eliminators, Oppressors, in, Insurgers, Intercessors, Inceptors, Infiltrators. It's, it's getting... It's, it's, it's a thing now. It's a thing. Okay? We've officially reached Space Wolf Wolf status for Primaris units. Everything's got to end in ERs. That's how that works now, alright? Just as every Space Wolf thing has to have something to do with a wolf in it, it's that we've now reached that point. That is now how Primaris work. All new units end with er. That's what it is every time. Okay? I'm glad we're all on the same page. So, an Invictor Tactical Warsuit is in essence a redemptive dreadnought that has been stripped back and redesigned with lighter, sound dampening materials for use on covert operations. I mean, <laughs> look... Look, much though I love this model, and I know a lot of you don't, I know it's not a Dreadnought, I know it's a piloted mech, I know that it's not really very Space Marine, let's be totally honest, but you've seen my Dreadnoughts, they're all ludicrous, they're all stupid, as such, I love this thing. I can't, I can't lie and say that I don't, because I do. I can like it and also think that it's not perhaps 100% what you would expect for Space Marines to be fielding, but I still like it. Sorry. So... It's also not stealthy at all. <laughs> I don't care how many, how many like sound dampening materials have been used. It's a fucking great mech. That's not. That's not stealthy. I'm sorry. I appreciate the effort, but come on, come on. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. It's fine. It's cool. So it's good. Okay. Why is this cool? Because their design makes them so stealthy that they can even set up in a concealed floor position like the infiltrators and incursors. Oh, sure, sure. Suspension of disbelief, let's go. In addition to a hard-hitting Invicta Fist, that was the name of my first band in college, uh, the Warsuit is armed with a powerful... Pr it's, it wasn't. The Warsuit is armed with a powerful primary weapon in the form of flamethrowing incendium cannon or a twin iron hail auto cannon with which it can unleash your choice of fiery or high-velocity death. So it looks like a stubber, but it's not actually a stubber. Okay. So the Twin Iron Hail Auto Cannon, 48 inches, heavy 6, strength 7, AP minus 1, damage 2. Yeah, alright, fine. It's an auto cannon. Incendium Cannon, range is only 12, but heavy 2d6, strength 5, AP minus 1, damage 1. When resolving an attack made of this weapon, do not make a hit roll. It automatically scores a hit. That's quite tasty. That's quite nice. I like that. We wouldn't talk about the war suit without mentioning the pistolized heavy bolter strapped to its hip, which is by far the best feature of this thing. The war suit's pilot can use its Invicta Fist to draw and fire, even at point blank range. Excellent. So, heavy sidearm. Whilst this model is within one inches of any enemy unit, its heavy bolter has a type characteristic of Pistol 3. <laughs> so, the mental image of that is running up to someone, pulling the weapon out, and just capping them in the head. Like, from point-blank range, effectively? Sure. I'm in. I'm in. The whole concept is ludicrous anyway. I'm on board for that. It charges in, it's got the fist ready, the dude's like, Oh my god, I'm about to get punched in the head. But no! It's actually a gun! Bang! Awesome. Lee daft. Finally, Infiltrator Squad. I think this is finally. No, there's Eliminators as well. So, uh, as before, 
well, yeah, we already know what infiltrators can do, just about, but let's quickly skip through it anyway. So, uh, you, you can have the infiltrator with a comms array. Whilst this unit contains a model with the infrared comms array, if there are any friendly Chapter Phobos Captain or Chapter Phobos Lieutenant models on the battlefield, this unit is always treated as being within range of those models' rights of battle and tactical precision abilities. Nice. Nice. I like it. And finally, a choice of awesome ammunition that it would make a Vindicare Assassin's Sin Skin turn green with envy. It feels like Space Marines are getting a lot right now. I'm not going to lie. It feels like they're getting a lot, a lot of stuff right now. So, we have the Eliminators. And uh, there's the different ammo types. The Executioner, Hyperfrag, and Mortis Rounds. Mortis Rounds still sounds the best. Hyperfrag sounds like a first-person shooter that was made in the late 90s. And their ammo profiles have been ramped up. For starters, they're now all strength 5. Okay. Alternatively, you can assemble your Eliminator with Last Fusils, which are the first dedicated anti-tank weapons for your Primaris infantry. I like that. A couple of so-armed units will reduce even the toughest vehicles to molten slag in short order. They're called Eliminators for good reason. So the Last Fusil has a range of 36 inches, heavy 1, strength 8, AP minus 3, damage 3. Yep, that'll work. That's, <laughs> that seems... Seems pretty anti-tank to me. I do like the use of the word slag, though. You don't see that often. You slay. You just don't see it. Okay. The Eliminator Sergeant can also play one of two crucial roles in the squad. The guided aim mobility enables him to forego his own shooting to add one to the hit and wound roles of the Eliminator under his command. I actually like that. That's kind of cool. Acting as like a spotter. That's nice. Meanwhile, a <laughs> Sergeant <laughs> equipped with an Instigator Bolt Carbine. God, the naming is just so... It's something... Which is perfect for luring your enemies into a trap. All you need to do is place your hapless eliminators in charge range of an enemy unit, and when your foe has committed, simply withdraw. After firing Overwatch for good measure, your opponent's unit will be left exposed, ready to gun down or counter charge at your leisure, while your eliminators mock and shoot them from a safe distance. The first time this unit's eliminator sergeant fires Overwatch with an instigator bolt carbine in your opponent's turn, this unit can, after it has resolved its Overwatch, move as if it were your movement phase. It cannot advance as part of this move. Right, sure. I mean, I wouldn't recommend just dangling Eliminators out in the middle of the battlefield in the vague hope that someone takes the bait and charges them, but it's a nice it's a nice ability to have. So, this is the other thing. So, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, and Dark Angels will also have access to the Captain, Librarian, Lieutenant, Phobos Armor, Eliminator, Squad, Incursor Squad, Infiltrator Squad, Suppressor Squad, Invictus Tactical Water, Impulsor, and Primaris Repulsor Executioner. What a mouthful that is. So, yeah. You, you'll, you'll be able to get those now. You can have them. They are available for use. Which is, get, at least they don't have to wait for the next... Co well, I suppose technically they don't have to buy the new codex to be able to use them in the first place. But, still. I oh, don't know. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, I jumped the gun. I retract that statement. Full data sheets and match play points values for each of these units will soon be available as a free PDF download for each of these chapters, along with the rules for Shock Assault. That's good. 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 That is the correct move. Don't make them buy it. Don't make them buy it. Give it them for free. If we could have more of that, that would be absolutely grand. But good. Definitely good. I like that. More of that. So. Jesus Christ. There's so many. There's so many new rules. Or at least change rules or whatever. There's just so much shit. Been keeping one last part of the new Angels of Death ability up our sleeves. Angels of Death is getting, like, uh, uh, complicated now, at this point. It feels like there's a lot being packed into Angels of Death. So, combat doctrines represent the structure way in which the adherents of the Codex Societies overcome any adversary. First of all, they bombard their enemies from afar, so on and so forth. Veterans of previous editions may remember that the Ultramarines had a form of this ability a number of years back. Now, it doesn't just apply to them, but to all of the chapters that use the rules from Codex Space Marines. So, your Space Marines will begin the battle with the Devastator Doctrine active. At the start of any of your turns after the first, you can choose to change from the Devastator Doctrine to the Tactical Doctrine, and then, on a later turn, from the Tactical Doctrine to the Assault Doctrine. Once you've changed doctrines, you can't go back, your Space Marines are already committed, but your current Doctrine will remain active for the remainder of the battle unless changed, here are the benefits you can look forward to while each doctrine is active. Suffice it to say that your opponent's saving throws are in for a shock. It feels like... Honestly, this feels like a codex for a new edition. 
I'm not going to... Uh, genuinely, this is nothing like... This feels nothing like the codexes that we've seen so far. It feels nothing like the Chaos Codex that we had not even that long ago. This feels... Like, the approach to this feels absolutely different. Like, properly different. This is the kind of, like, sudden piling on that I would expect to see... Like, at the announcement of something new that isn't just a codex. I mean, yeah, okay, a new codex is a big thing, but... This doesn't feel like any of the others that we've seen in any way. Like, it genuinely feels totally different. Like, the approach is totally different for this. So, we've got the armor pen characteristic of heavy and grenade weapons. This model's grip is improved by one. So, AP zero becomes AP minus one. Tactical is the AP of rapid fire and assault weapons improved by one. And the assault doctrine is the armor pen characteristic of pistol and melee weapons is improved by one. So, yeah, all right. That's, I mean, I, I like it, but it's... It feels like it's getting more complicated. Genuinely feels like it's getting more complicated as we go on. So, uh, yeah, that is loads to look forward to, they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, it feels a little... I don't know. This feels a little bloaty to me, but I don't know whether that's just me. I don't know. It just feels a little bloaty. It just feels a little bloaty. I can't really justify why that is the case. I can't really explain why that is, that is the case. It just does feel that way. But... Important thing is, what do you think, you lot, in the comments? Does this stuff look any good? Is there anything you're particularly excited for? Have you grown to like the stupid mech yet? Or are you still thinking it's the worst thing ever made? Which is fine, you're totally allowed to think that, he said, his voice breaking. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to click all the things that you can see, the Patreon, the subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like, don't click if you don't want to. And if you're going to buy some 40k stuff and you're in Europe or the UK, then please do use the... Uh, the um, the, I've forgotten the word, affiliate link in the description. <laughs> Use it if you like. It's You pay less for the stuff you're going to buy anyway, and I get a little something for sending you that way. It's a way of supporting the channel without having to do anything extra at all, really. So you can do that if you like. You don't have to. It's totally up to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later for the Ultramarines thingy. Toodaloo.